Hey, it's me. I just got back from coffee with a friend at Starbucks. And uh, it's a good friend of mine. I've known him for many, many, many years. And we talked a little bit about the business. Actually, we talked a lot about the business, the business being show business. And I wanted to share a little bit of the conversation with you. So today we are going to talk business and how not to take the business personally. When things happen, they feel very personal. When you don't, you don't get the job or you keep getting booked for a particular type of role, it feels very, very personal. Why are they doing this to me? Um, don't they know, don't, don't they know I can play any role <laughs> or don't they know that I can play this other type of role? I don't always have to play doctors or lawyers or maids or, or, or whatever it is. I can branch out. I can do other things. I know I personally have felt that way. I play a lot of authority figures. I don't think you can be the oldest of seven daughters without being <laughs> without being a little bossy. I know there's been a movement to ban the word bossy, but I got no problem with bossy. I am at times. Uh, and so I get it. I understand that I what I bring into the room with me. So I play a lot of authority figures. It's not always interesting as an artist to play the same role over and over and over again, even though you put your own twist on it, you know you can do something different. But the industry sees you a certain way and those are the auditions that you get over and over and over again. A lot of people have an issue with being typecast, especially new actors. I don't wanna be typecast. Well, first of all, if you're new to show business, if you're typecast, it means you're being cast, which means you are working, which puts you ahead of the game because there are a lot of non-working actors. The best way to get to the work that you actually want to do and find interesting, other than creating your own projects, of course, is to keep working. So if you need to play an attorney 20 times, then maybe on the 21st time in the room, the casting director will look at your resume and say, oh, well, you, you know, okay, you've been, you've been around for a while. Let's see what you can do with this. Let's see what you can do with that. In the meantime, you've got paychecks from those other 20 times that you played the attorney. So you don't have to go and find a, a side gig or, you know, a whole nother hustle to sustain you while you try to do what you really find interesting. I am never going to tell anybody to take work that offends their sensibilities. Like if there are certain things that you don't do, it could be uh, smoking, drinking, cursing, nudity, uh, certain types of humor. If you don't do those things, it's it, it may limit you. It may preclude you from being able to accept every audition that's open to you, but if it's okay with you, it is okay with me. There are certain things that I don't do either. You have to do what you feel is going to be okay with you and your particular situation. That said, it's better for you if the people in Hollywood can pigeonhole you somewhat. If you become the go-to girl when they need a certain type of character, that's good for you. If you're at the forefront of people's minds when they need a particular type of character, that's great. Go in and do your work. Most actors, when they first start acting or when they first get into the business, and the reason I keep differentiating those two is because you may have been acting for a while in, in uh, theater, in community theater, in college, in, in you know, some other town. But when I say the business, I am talking about show business as is recognized as Hollywood. Even in, in New York, if you're working on TV and, and feature films in New York, everything comes through Hollywood. So I'm talking about Hollywood when I say the business. I work with actors to help them to understand the business of the business better. There are so many things that nobody told me when I first got into show business and I got blindsided by a bunch of things. Just everyday experiences that, that nobody would think to tell you. Basic things. I had someone who helped me tremendously. I'm gonna give her a shout out. Her name is Wiley Small. She's an actress. I'll put a link up to her, her website. She's, she's still a friend of mine. 
and she helped me tremendously when I was fresh out of a Meisner program and I didn't know really how do I get auditions, what's a workshop, uh, like what do I do with my headshot, like you know I didn't I didn't know anything and she helped me to get a toehold and understand that this this is a business it's a business it doesn't matter how you feel on a particular day you show up and you show out <laughs> you just you do you do what you're supposed to do be a professional at all times now i'm working with actors because i've i've been working consistently since 2005 and i've learned a lot in that time i've learned a lot of things that work i've learned a lot of things that don't work i've learned a lot of very expensive lessons. One that I learned recently that still hurts. It cost me a lot of money and I'm not ready to talk about it yet because it still hurts. But <laughs> at some point I will be ready to talk about it. When I work with actors and help them to make sure that they have all the tools they need in order to be open for business as a professional actor, there are two things. Very few actors say they want to be commercial actors. Very few actors say they want to be character actors. I'll address the first, commercial actors. A lot of actors are against commercial acting, commercial acting because they feel it's beneath them. It's not real acting. They came out here to be stars. Commercials aren't going to make them stars. Okay, commercials sometimes require actual acting. You have to play a character. Uh, if you are able to improv, that will help you a lot. A lot of it is about look because commercials have such a short period of time in which they need to grab your attention. The audience needs to be able to identify who you are, what is this setting, what's going on in this scene, what product is, is being sold to me, how, I, how do I feel about this, pro this product all in 30 to 60 seconds. So there's a lot going on in commercials. It's a different skill from working on TV, which is also a different skill from working on feature film, which is also a different skill from auditioning. So these are all different components to an acting career, but some people dismiss commercials because it's not real acting. They pay real checks. <laughs> it... Commercials, to me personally, are a lot of fun. They do give you exposure, but they they pay a lot of bills. I hear stories about back in the day when you can you could book a commercial and, and one commercial would buy you a house and things like that. I haven't seen that personally in this day and age. A lot has changed as far as the, the fee structures and residuals are concerned, but commercial checks have kept me from having to do a lot of other jobs that would take me away from focusing on acting. I tell that to people who say, I don't want to do commercials. I let them know this and then I leave them alone. If you don't want to do it, fine, don't do it. Uh, you know, whatever. So the other, the other thing that I hear is that 95% of actors want to be in leading roles. Leading lady, leading man. I would say to you, if you fall into that category of wanting to be a leading lady or a leading man, again, I am never going to tell you that you can't do it because there are leading ladies, a leading lady, I, I always think that term is really weird, just like the term lady is, is so refined, you know, <laughs> it's just really funny to me. There are far more people who are character types than there are people who are leading lady, leading man types. When you do theater, they can put some age makeup on you, put some, some, you know, they can make you look like anything. You can be 17 and they can make you look like you're 35 and you can be that leading lady or leading man. When you're in front of a, ca a camera and the camera's like in your face and you see everything, it's different. It's different than being on stage where the people are somewhat removed. It's a different experience. I would encourage you to look at, to study trends in Hollywood because they do change. Find people on TV and in film who look like you 
and look at what they're doing. What, what types of roles are they being cast in? Are they being cast in character roles? Are they being cast in leading lady, leading man roles? That will let you know how much of a fight you have to get to that leading lady, leading man role if you do. There aren't as many roles to go around of that type. So there's that battle already. And if you don't fit into that mold of Hollywood leading lady, leading man type, then you have to fight that much harder. A lot of actors don't want to embrace the fact that they are character actors because they feel like it means that they aren't good looking or desirable. Or I had, I had a friend of mine who I think is just the sweetest, cutest little thing. And she said she didn't want to be seen as a character actress because she thought it meant that she wasn't pretty. And I understand it because Hollywood, you know, everything has, everything Hollywood has this certain veneer, certain gloss to it. And if you can't be that, it's very easy to start feeling like, well, I'm, I'm not enough. No. These are arbitrary rules that somebody else set up. Hollywood rules and regulations are not about you personally. Most folks in Hollywood don't even know you personally. They don't know me personally. It's not, it is not personal. You need to know who you are. Don't let Hollywood or Hollywood dreams make you over. Know who you are and be the best whatever, whoever you are that you can be. Because you're the only one who can do it. You're the only one who can be you. And if you're going to be a good you or a bad you, whatever you choose, it's up to you to do it. I've said it before. I'll say it again. You're always going to be a better real you than a fake somebody else. So do you. Because when they're looking for you, guess who's going to book that role? You're going to book it. <laughs> and it might, who knows, it may be a, a character role, maybe a leading lady, leading man role. But if it's for you, nobody else can get it. Don't put Hollywood in charge of your self-worth. I still remember the first two celebrities that I saw when I moved to L.A. I saw Minnie Driver in Macy's trying on shoes and I was so excited. Like I walked into Macy's and there were a bunch of people just like, you know, huddled around and I was trying to figure out what's going on over there. They're giving away free shoes or what? Because I do love me a good shoe. I looked and I'm like, oh my God, it's Minnie Driver. From the Midwest. I, w I'm, I wasn't used to seeing celebrities out and about. It's like, oh my God, I just saw her in a movie. I'm, you know, <laughs> I didn't act like that, but on the inside, I was like that. And the second celebrity is one that I will not name. And, and, and I'm going to tell you why. I was in Ralph's, which is a grocery store. And I was in the cereal aisle, looking up at the cereal, and I happened to look to my right, and I realized that there was this, this big celebrity there. I mean, she wasn't big, but, but her star was bright at this time. And I realized, oh, that's so-and-so. In my head, I could hear that so-and-so. And I realized that she had really bad skin problems, like... um you know, she, she had clear, some acne and some, some like scarring. And then I, I realized I was staring at her. So I, I turned, but she looked back at me, you know, and I didn't say anything to her. I figured she just wanted to do her shopping. You know, she wants to do her shopping. Why would I be like, okay, so it's on aisle nine, y'all. As you can see, I have, I have skin problems. I will tell you, I have, I have, uh, I have acne. I have sensitive skin. I have rosacea. I got problems, y'all. I can't like, I can't use certain products. When I put my hands, like when I put my hands on my face, I'm probably going to break out. Um, if I'm in the sun too long, my rosacea is going to act. Or if I'm in a hot, a really hot space, uh, it's a mess. It's a mess. And it's really, it, it's a part-time job keeping, trying to keep my skin looking semi-human. Plus I take medication every day. It's really a pain. So to see someone who was working all the time like and was held up as this beautiful beautiful uh and, and she is beautiful beautiful beauty queen type person and to realize to quote that 
magazine, I don't know, what is it, People or Us Weekly or something like that that says stars, they're just like us. Basically, it's like, oh my God, you know, hey, we got the same thing going on. Paisa, how you doing? You know, so that's when I realized there was no need in me trying to be this, this Hollywood glossy and flossy thing because they don't even look like that. And then, of course, once I started working, and I see how we all look when we arrive in the makeup trailer, with, with a few exceptions. But, you know, that stuff is, is painted on. It's stuck hair. I mean, like, it's just, you know, it's, it's Hollywood magic. The makeup artist is doing their thing. The hair person is doing their thing. You got the, the, the cinematographer. You got the, you know, person putting the light in your eyes so that it just pops just so. And it's Hollywood magic. So I don't have to worry about that. All I got to do is live my life and, and, and concentrate on being the best person that I can be, the best actress that I can be, the best human being that I can be. And I don't have to, I'm not going to try to fit into this little box. And if that puts me in the character category, which I am anyway, fine. Just, I just want to work. That's it. I just want to work. I'm going to get paid. I want to have a good, good life. I want to enjoy what I do. And I worry about all the other stuff. So don't you, don't you worry about it. Don't get hung up on that stuff. Oh my goodness. You know, I, uh, I didn't get this, this role and, and maybe they think I'm ugly or maybe I don't have the right type of hair. Oh, we're going to talk about hair, honey. I don't want this video to be too long, but when I shot Jane the Virgin this past week, there was a background actress who came up to me. I had my hair in, in two French braids um, pinned. You can see it here. I'll, I'll put a link to my last video. And she came up to me and she asked me if I had trouble working with my hair natural. Last night, I uh, I blow dried it and I flat ironed it. The hair thing and the skin thing, those are my personal issues. You know what? Maybe my next video will be a personal issue video and I can put it all out on Front Street because I got some I got some issues, y'all. And maybe some of my viewers can help a sister out because I need some help. But she came up to me and she asked me if I had any trouble with my hair natural. And I told her no. As a matter of fact, I worked the most when my hair was short, <laughs> short, 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 and just I wore curly. And that, that was it. That's, that's when I worked the most. She had a, her mom was telling her, nobody's going to put you on TV with your hair all nappy and n n nobody wants to see that. Here, put this wig on. And she said, but I, I'm wearing a weave right now. I am tired of wearing a weave. She showed me pictures of her hair that she had done the big chop, cut it all off, and let it grow back. So it was probably about, about this long. And I, I told her, I said, do you, do you. Because if you are doing you, you're going to be so much more comfortable than if you are living like somebody who's got something to hide. And I'm not saying that everybody with a weave is hiding something. Everybody with a wig is hiding something. I know people wear wigs and weaves and braids and falls and, and ponytails and whatever just to switch things up. But if you are hiding, if you don't feel like you are living a life that is authentically you, then you are not going to be the best actor that you can be. Because acting is not just putting on. It requires an access, full access to your emotions. And if you aren't even willing to deal with your own stuff, how are you going to create a real character who has their own stuff going on. It's the characters written with stuff. You have to take that character from the page to the stage or, or on camera by letting them use your, your emotions. You have to, you have to use your emotional understanding of this character's written situation. If you are not honest with yourself about you, how are you going to be honest about Mary Sue's life? as it's written written on the page, it, then it's all fake. And you, nothing's real and nobody wants to watch it. <laughs> it's, it's the truth. I sound like my, my one of my acting teachers now, man. He would do, yeah, he would do that to us. He would be like, this is all BS. I don't want to watch any of this. <laughs> you know? And it sounds harsh, but it was so true. So please don't make us watch BS. Live as authentically as you are able. 
Don't worry about typecasting and trying to be something that you know you aren't. Do you? Find ways to do what you want to do. Even if you're working on a character that you don't absolutely love, bring you to it. Make it interesting to you because when you're interested, you are interesting to other people. Bored people, nobody wants to watch bored people. I don't even want to be around bored. I don't want to talk to bored people. Don't text me, don't call me, don't. I, no, and I think we all feel that way. All righty, just a little business out of business talk. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask me some questions. Please make sure to like my video. Subscribe, y'all. I see y'all watching, but I don't see y'all subscribing, so please be sure to subscribe. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye, y'all.